after removing the differential now we get to the exciting part which is installing the locker locker itself I will be using the provided instruction right uh, so the first instruction is to take note of the backlash between ring gear and pinion gears by holding the pinion flange steady and rocking the ring gear back and forth it also needs uh, to be done 90 degrees and repeat four times so the amount of movement should be even in all position between I've converted this 0 0.2033 millimeter and 0 0.4 so if you rock the ring gear you can see that it has a slight movement so that slight movement needs to be the same after we install the locker it's quite tricky to set up the down indicator so I found out the best way to do it is push the ring gear and then turn uh, the pinion back and forth slightly until the needle stops which means there's no pressure and then set the indicator to zero and here we can see and here we can see the backlash when it's moved it's showing 1.4 which is uh, which is good because the Prado specification is 1.3 to 1.8 millimeters so looking good so far now what I need to do is repeat this process every 90 degrees so four measurements so after measuring uh, four location on the backlash I got 1.4, 1.38, 1.4 and 1.44 millimeters so all looking good next we need to undo the carrier bearing retainer bolts and we need to remove each of these retainer bolts and then to take out the carrier assembly so as we want to make sure that everything is back where they were I will start marking um, these bolts and these sides with relevant uh, punch mark. So one, two, three, four. just to make sure uh, also right using an engraver it's not really needed So now that we've marked all the position, we need to also mark this uh, adjuster mechanism so we can put it back where it was. So I'll just mark between here and here and also on the other side.
and we also need to mark uh, the mating between the ring gear and the carrier so I'll just put two mark just in case Now that we want to remove this mechanism, this is where the lock pliers come handy because uh, we would like to lock the position of this adjusting nut with uh, the carrier. So it just simplifies uh, later assembly. Do the same with the other side. Now we are ready to remove all these four uh, retaining bolts. So I use a 215 Nm uh, Ozito and it seems to do the job. Okay, I got four bolts loose, just making sure that the locking part still holds and I'll remove it. So there we have the carrier disassembled and we keep all the bolts and everything uh, together just to make an easier assembly. If it ever comes loose it's not a big issue but it's always quicker when we put things back together where how it was. The next instruction is to undo the two parts of the carrier assembly, remove the ring gear, the cross spider, gears, washers and springs. So the two parts are the ring gear which is held by these outer bolts and the, the second assembly is the LSD unit which is held by the inner bolts and within that LSD there are springs, washer and stuff like that. So I'll start by removing the ring gear. Make sure that you have marks between the ring gear and the carrier so we can put them back all together and I will mark also the LSD unit uh, mating with a cross spider it's actually a very hard metal so I wasn't able to punch it I will use an engraver the bolts which held the ring gear is locked using this uh, lock tab so uh, it needs to be moved a bit just not too much uh, just in case it snaps loose uh, or broke off so i thought it was a good idea to rest the carrier in the um on the bearings so I just uh, put the assembly in, in a better way.
Now we can remove the ring gear bolts. Unfortunately, the ring gear doesn't just fall off, as some cases I've seen, so we'll try to use a rubber mallet, but ideally it needs to be done with a brass drift, which uh, I do not have, so I'll try to do this carefully. So that didn't work, I'll try another method. So I will not try using a wood and hammer, I will not try to directly impact with a steel hammer because I do not want to chip the ring gear. So it didn't move, I'll try another method. I'll see if I can use heat to expand the ring gear and drop it. So it didn't touch, so obviously I need the proper tool, which is a brass drift. Alright, so I found this uh, brass plumbing uh, thing. So hopefully I can use this to persuade the ring gear to come off. I've also put in two bolts here, just very loosely. So should the ring gear come off, it doesn't just drop off. seems to be doing the job so it's definitely coming loose very slowly so it's very close now Happy days! Now we are left with the LSD or limited sleeve diff differential assembly. So to separate these two, uh, just need to take all these bolts out. Don't forget to mark so we can put them back together uh, how it was. So just be very careful so it doesn't um, come apart because it's under tension by a spring. So now that the LSD is disassembled, we can see what's inside it. Just want to keep everything in place. Apparently there is a, a seam here that stays at the, at the back, so I'll keep an eye on that one. So that's basically the order and 
just making sure there's nothing left on the other side of the assembly. I would like to have the ability to put back the original Toyota setup, so uh, I will number the LSD from 1 to uh, whatever, 4 or 5. Also, mark these gears A, B, C, D. So, in the future, if I want to put back the original LSD, it all fits into its place. So these plates have been marked as 1, 2, 3, 4 and this uh, cross shaft is A, B, C, D and on the other side I will mark the plates as uh, C1 to C4. The next instruction says to remove some of the LSD plates and to retain the outermost LSD plate and note which side it is fitted. They are commonly different thickness on each side and it is important that they remain on their original side. Also note that the large cross hatch pattern fits against the hemisphere, not the next washer. So I wasn't <coughs> sure about that one at first, but I think what they mean by retain the outermost LSD plate is this one because this one uh, fits to this hemisphere and not the the washer so if you look at the washer it's uh, slotted against this part and this more outermost plate sits against this one you can see the imprint of the cross heads which is just uh, an imprint of this washer so it would have sit like that so I think, I think the instruction says to keep this one and also choose the best condition shiny LSD plate so the best condition shiny LSD plate and it must be one of the shiny chrome plates not the one one of the cross heads clutch plates so not one of these so if I'm correct I need to remove this one and these two So it says these plates will be used as a truss washers for the new XL gears referred to below. So it will fit to the inner surface of the outermost LSD plate. So this part will go to the locker and also do the same with the carrier side as LSD. So the rest of the LSD I will just remove and keep it safe.
Next, I will also remove these gears. I have marked them, so I know how to put them back together if needed. And I need to keep them together with their convex looking washers. Remove the cross shaft and inspect. Next step is examine the spider. If there is any sign of wear, particularly where the pinion gear spin, then replace the spider. So it is essential for the correct operation of the locker that this shaft is in perfect condition. Wear of only 0.002 inch is unacceptable. Substandard replacement cross shaft are characterized by soft case hardening and are therefore not suited for this application. So I need to check whether everything is good uh, for this cross shaft. Check the condition of the cross shaft with the micrometer and so far so good. So it's 15.4 exactly, both on the moving side and the inner side. So the condition is good. Now I'll, I will remove the carrier side gears and mark them uh, with a C as a marking uh, as to differentiate the, this side. I will also take out the outermost uh, plate, just like the other side of the assembly. So I will also number them uh, using C1, C2, C3, C4 to differentiate from this part, C4 uh, carrier side. And just like the other side, we will take the outermost side, so this one, and one shiny plate. So 
just make sure that uh, we take the best of the Siani plate. This looks very good. And then the rest of these are for safekeeping. Next instructions say fit an axle gear and thrust washer in the drink gear side of the carrier. So the drink gear side. Spin to make sure it has settled and position the spacer ring over the center of the axle gear. So the recess in the spacer fits around the pins in the cross spider. Next we fit uh, one of the axle gear on the carrier side as per instruction. Put the shiny washer and then note the orientation that the grid should face the carrier so it should be like that and the assembly then we put the spacer with the recess uh, pointing to the cross shaft. We put in the cross shaft as per marking. And next we will measure the distance between the spacer and the center block. And according to the instruction it should be 0 0.15 to 4 millimeter to 0 0.508 millimeter. Measure through the opening and take note in the uh, spec sheet it needs to be recorded for the warranty. So I've measured this and one side I've recorded exactly 0 0.5 millimeter. And make sure that you push the cross shaft down so it doesn't tilt as well as the spacer. Yeah, so 0 0.5 on that side I will then make another measurement for the other three sides to make sure So I know it looks good, 0 0.5 for uh, both four sides. So I'll write that down. And then we need to do the same for the other side of the assembly. Exactly same method. Don't forget to clean the spacer and all these uh, truss washers and crease them a bit so again just a different method of doing it drop the outermost SLST plate the one with the grid facing the carrier and then the shiny washer and then the low cut axle gear Sure it's seated and under the spacer again make sure that the cross shaft is turned so it's facing the correct way So again I measure the distance between the spacer and the center block and I'm quite pleased that they are all set 0.5 so it's a perfect symmetry. The instruction says uh, that sym symmetry or the better symmetry that is measured the better 
the low car will work. So I'll try to reconfirm and see if you're right. Very nice. So the next instruction is uh, to check for operating tolerance. Put little grease into all the holes and teeth of each locker can give. Fit spring into each of the deeper slotted holes. Two per gear. Fit a pin into each of the round holes. Two per gear. With a step or nipple exposed. So the nipple pointing up. The step locates the pin into the end of the spring. Locate one cam gear into an XL gear already in one half of the carrier. Do not put the spider. Position the second cam gear onto the first, aligning pins with springs. Push down a couple of times to make sure the gears move freely and the pins and springs are aligned. Position the second XL gear on the second cam gear. Gently sit the carrier and pull the carrier together using two or three bolts only. Make sure the local kits are missed. So I think what it wants is have one side, put all the uh, the cam, put the springs, and then put or assemble both of the section, but without the cross shaft itself. So I'll do that. So I'll start greasing all these uh, local sections. And also the holes so that the spring can, can sit without falling off. Grease the spacer as well. to the other side of the assembly. So next we fit <coughs> springs on the slotted holes and pins on the round holes for the pins at the nipple to face up. Do it on both axle. And then without fitting the cross shaft. The instruction says to put them against each other, but uh, also to put in the spacer. Just need to do this carefully. So make sure that the spring matches the pins. The 
second part of the axle. And we do the whole assembly again, not forgetting to align the original setup. So the trick is to make sure that the spacer in the middle can be accessed. So next uh, instruction says to put in just a few bolts and then measure the inter what it call it intercam clearance. Flip the assembly and put a few bolts in. Should be enough. So now what we need to do is measure the spacing between those cams as uh, per instruction. We can do that through these um, cross shaft holes. The measurement should be between 3.556 mm to 4.191 mm. So this is the thickness that I was able to measure uh, between the cans. And by using micrometer, it is 0 0.38, which is definitely between 3.5 and 4.1 so that's actually quite in the middle so I will try to measure all of the clearances uh, throughout so so far so good and these are the set that I use, so 1 mil, 0 0.05, 0 0.09, 0 0.1, 1 1.5, 1 and 0.55 so basically this whole set just omitting 0.45 don't forget to record all these measurements in the uh, installation sheet next in the instruction is consider to check the symmetry and overall tolerances if the loca is not symmetrical then a thrust washer will be needed to alter and if the tolerance gap is too great or too small, then possibly both washers will need to be altered. So I think uh, this piece is quite good. Everything is within tolerance and in fact very symmetrical. Next is to reassemble the carriers as before. This time with a spider located between the cam gears. Make sure that springs are aligned before final tightening of the assembly bolts. So we will uh, disassemble and reassemble the diff of the carrier using um, the final cross shaft. careful as there is still spring tension in this
make sure we still are online. Make sure not to drop any of the pins or the springs. Uh, locker doesn't give any spare. Place the cross shaft in the right position. Always good idea to loop everything. Okay, very important to assemble in the correct orientation and position so because I've marked them with APCD it makes things very easy next reassemble this part on top of the carrier part And then again fit the whole assembly and put a few screws in. do a final check of everything uh, everything is how it was aligned and just quickly go through all the assembly uh, before doing all the bolts and final torque check that all the springs are seated refit the rest of the bolt with Loctite and torque these LSD assembly bolts 
to 47 newton meters here I'm using a motor bike tar changer to help me with the torquing of the LSD uh, mount or LSD bolt again torque to 30 newton meters and then second torque to 47 Final torque, so we will mark all of the bolt. That's it, all done. Next, we will need to put the ring gear into the assembly. But as can be seen here, it is a very tight fit. So instead of forcing it using bolt, what I will do is I will heat this ring gear in the oven. And then uh, once it's heated, it expands and it just slide in. So once heated at 100 degrees, the ring gear just slides in. So now we can start putting some bolts. Don't forget the Loctite. Here I'm using a blue Loctite instead of red because uh, the mechanism uses a lock tab, so it's quite secure. Now that I've snugged up two, uh, four bolts. I can flip the assembly and put the rest of the bolt. Remember this is hot, so wear gloves. I'm just going to uh, torque this very snugly, just a snug fit, and wait for the um, ring gear to cool down before doing any torque. As usual, crisscross pattern. and wait for it to cool down entirely also important to remember is to uh, put in the ring gear as it was installed before so this was my mark so again I'm using this motorbike tire changer as I do not have a dedicated vice seems to do the job and the required torque is 137 newton meters as usual we will do a few pass the first pass is 27 newton meters
the next pass 40 newton meters next pass 80 newton meters I smooth, so I have to tighten the vice. One hundred newton meters. So now we do the final talk. So now we completed all the torquing and just need to push the tap back in place. installation of the carrier into the diff, have put the diff into a vise as well. Make sure that all these are clean.
that was checked this part are the way it was so one mark two mark three mark and four marks and just try to fit the pull without any torquing
So because there is a thread between these two sections, the whole assembly needs to drop in perfectly. Otherwise, if you torque this without having done that, it will cross the thread. So just take your time. Because normally the whole assembly is under tension. Once this is in place, it's actually quite hard to do the same on the other side. So I will need to find a way how to do that. What I will try to do is remove this bolt and loosen it a bit before uh, marking it first. Just try to wiggle my way around.
So the easiest way after we put this side correctly, this needs to be under tension, which means that we can't just put everything in place. So what I did was uh, just remove the top cap, place this assembly of this nut to the bottom side, which is very easy to find the thread, and then place the top cap again, which then will make the assembly untension. So just need to retension to the original location. Snug these two bolts and install the locking pad. Just snug enough because uh, we still need to check whether this left or carrier side is cross threaded or not. So although it looks okay, we'll remove the locking tab and just try to rotate the adjustment mechanism and see whether it can rotate freely and always remember to mark uh, so you know where it was originally So I can confirm that this side I can also do a uh, 360 degrees rotation so nothing is cross threaded so I will relock the lock nut and tighten snugly the bolts before final torque.
before doing the final torque, I will put Loctite on this bolt. I have to feel that everything is still in place and we need to torque this to 83 newton meters as usual I will do uh, step torque so I will first do 40, 40, 40, 40 and then 83, 83, 83, 83 I will torque to 40 newton meters Now torquing to 83 newton meters. So I feel that everything is moving as they should. That looks good. So the next step is we will check the backlash. The final stage of this part is to check the backlash after all the changes. And seems like we've got the correct one. So, so on 1.335 or 325. So it's still in spec in fact. Now it's a bit or a fraction tighter, which is great. So I need to check uh, on the four parts to make sure. So we have the final details of the measurement before and after. Spacer to cross shaft clearance, left hand 0.5 mil, right hand 0.5 mil, so very symmetrical. Intercan clearance 3.8 and 3.8. Uh, this is an average uh, after measuring a few locations and the backlash before was 1.4, 1.38, 1.4, 1.44 measuring every 90 degrees and after 1.3, 1.4, 1.35 and 1.4 so in a very good uh, within spec of Toyota uh, specifications The next step is to reinstall this diff into the car.